Thousands of refugees who fled the war in Syria to cross into Turkey have arrived at the border hoping to go back to their country after the earthquakes. Turkey has said it will allow them to leave for up to six months. The combined death toll in Turkey and Syria has climbed to more than 41,000 and millions are in need of humanitarian aid. Laura Bicker has been to Antakya, close to the Turkey border, where desperate Syrian families continue to arrive. The last time these Syrian families crossed this border, it was with dreams of a better life. Their homeland has been ripped apart by a civil war. Their new life in Turkey lies in ruins after the earthquake. So once again, they're on the move, carrying whatever they have left. Reem has lived in Antakya for nine years. Her children were born there, but she believes hostility towards Syrians in her host country is worse since the quake. We've lost our house. We tried to find another place to stay, but they kept chasing us away, asking us to return to Syria. Should I stay in the street with my children? Where should we go? The Turkish government has said Syrians can come back within two months, but many ask, what do they have to come back to? This is a broken city full of loss and fallen concrete. It's no longer a home. Those who choose to stay have nowhere else to go. Ahmed knows there's little here for him and his family, but he's nothing left in Syria. He's stuck. I think about the children a lot, about their situation and what will happen to them. When it's dark, their night turns into terror. I fear for them more than I do myself. It is rare, but survivors are still being found. 74-year-old Chamil Kakech was found alive 226 hours after the earthquake struck. Earlier today, three people were rescued from within this rubble. Two were children. And tonight, they believe there are signs of life in that building and they are continuing to work away, which shows that even amid the amount of human despair we've seen in the last 10 days, there's still sign of light. Laura Bicker, BBC News in Antakya. Our correspondent Caroline Davies is in southern Turkey for us. Um, Caroline, you've been there a few days now uh, in Adana, in and around the area. What have you seen? Well, Victoria, let me show a little bit about where I am now. So as you say, I'm in Adana, which is about 200 kilometers away from the epicenter of the earthquake. But of course here, people are still living out in tents as well. If you can see behind me, this used to be a food court. Now that there are, uh, there were 80 tents here yesterday, those are gradually being taken and moved further away uh, into the epicenter. Now, if you come around this way, you can just see quite how much space in the city is being taken up with tents. This is a children's play area, but even here, there are tents that are pitched up in every corner and space that they have. Now, speaking to people here, there, as you can see around us, the buildings for the vast majority are still standing here, but many have seen cracks appear in their buildings. They feel incredibly worried about staying in them, and that is why they have chosen to stay out overnight here for now over 10 days. Um, and uh, we were speaking to some of the authorities here. As I mentioned at the beginning, some of these tents are now being moved closer to the epicentre. And we've heard from people here that they are going to be moved into dorms dormitories into potentially uh, school buildings as well, somewhere that they can stay for longer. But that's very disconcerting for many of the people that are staying here because they've already had to leave their homes. They're now feeling like they're being moved on from these tent camps uh, into other facilities as well. And they're worried about how long they can stay in those facilities. So 10 days on, as we heard in Laura's report, many people are making the decision about whether they stay or whether they leave and where do they go to.